Welcome to Fish Du Jour. I'm your chef, Antonio Maleka. Very, very happy and excited to be here. Uh, we have some really cool things that we're gonna do. A couple little different things. Obviously, we're here in my home with all the crazy stuff happening out there in the world. But I can tell you what, it's hot down here. We're gonna fire it up no matter where we are. Whether we're on the lake, whether we're in the kitchen, whether we're in the forest, it's always gonna be hot. Uh, before we get started, I know a lot of people like to do a prayer before they eat. In this case, we're not gonna do a prayer. I'm gonna do a toast. I like to do a little toast to my friend Pete Bowman. I know you're watching and I know you're probably hungry, but I'm thirsty and I just wanna say salute to you, my friend. Let's get started. So what we're doing here today is something really cool. It's different, you can do this at home, it's very easy. A lot of people say, chef, you know, what can I do with tuna? What can I do with salmon? You know, there's always the same dishes that come to people's mind. Well, I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. And I'm gonna tell you something else. I don't even need fire. We're gonna do something called salmon ceviche. Salmon ceviche is actually a national dish of Peru. To be honest with you, there's different ways of making ceviche. The Mexicans do it very, very well, but traditionally it's uh, the Peruvians who uh, came up with the salmon ceviche. So we're gonna go through that. We've got some really nice ingredients. And then the tuna, we're gonna do something called tuna poke. And in fact, we're gonna turn both of these dishes as an appetizer. And what it's gonna be is a simple taco. We're gonna do a salmon ceviche taco and we're gonna do a tuna poke taco. We're gonna serve it together and it's gonna be great. So let's get started. We're gonna start with our ingredients. So the cilantro here will be used basically as an ingredient in the ceviche. You could also use it in the tuna poke, but I know there's a lot of people that are funny with cilantro. The red onion, jalapenos. Obviously we have some really nice key limes, lemon, navel oranges. Here we have ruby red grapefruit, which helps with the citrus when you're doing the ceviche, and avocado just for some color. And again, of course, we have the main event. We have uh, your salmon, which is really nice, and ahi tuna. Now we're gonna start with the salmon. The salmon, the ceviche, and when I was talking about earlier how you don't need any fire to cook this dish, what's gonna happen is the actual acid in all these citrus fruits are actually gonna cook that salmon down. Um, when we're doing the tuna poke, it'll be a little bit of similar, but we're gonna be doing something with soy sauce, a little bit of uh, sesame oil, to kind of bring in those uh, Asian flavors. So first thing we want to do, we have our salmon. The salmon here, just you can go to the grocery store, pick up some salmon, or if you're Angelo Viola, you can go out there and catch it, bring it back on shore and we'll cook her up. So when you're doing salmon ceviche, it's very, very important. This is a very important tip. One, your knife has to be razor sharp, okay? We're gonna sharpen it up before we get started. Done. Coming down, coming now at the, at the salmon. When you are doing ceviche, it's very, very important that this salmon has to be very, very thin. Because if you have a really big piece of salmon, what's gonna happen is it's gonna take longer for the acid to penetrate into the salmon. And with that being said, if you have really nice cubes where it's not too thick, you'll actually be able to enjoy this earlier. So what I did was I just simply made thin strips. Now what we're gonna do is just simply make a nice dice. Now one filet can probably do like four or five tacos, believe it or not. But what I'm gonna do here is make a big batch. And we're only gonna present one. But I'll tell you something else. If you're family, if you got people coming over, it makes a great appetizer. So the next thing we wanna do, we have an avocado. The avocado is basically gonna act as a nice crunch and also give it that vibrant green color. That color is absolutely beautiful. We're gonna cut it. Same thing, when you're doing ceviche, one thing you wanna do, which is really, really important, is keep everything the same dice. Because when you're plating this and you're putting it into your taco, you'll see here, 
basically the same size as the salmon. Okay, you can use about a half, say about a half an avocado will pretty much do six or seven tacos. If you have people coming over, like I said, and you want to feed a lot of people, the whole avocado will do. Now, the next step, the citrus, very, very important. This is what's going to actually cook the salmon, fresh oranges. Check this out, straight over it, just like that. The next thing, grapefruit. Going through all these citrus fruits, look at the color of that. Absolutely beautiful. Squeeze it in there, a lot of that grapefruit in there. Lemon. Again, the Peruvians like to zest the lemon. You can easily zest the lemon. You can zest the lime as well. This will actually help the avocado, believe it or not, stay green. You got a lime. And you can see I'm only using a quarter of the lemon, the lime, the orange, and the grapefruit. You don't want to put too much into it. You don't want it to be super sour. That's the last thing you want. Um, bit of kosher salt. Kosher salt is very, very important. Jalapeno. The thing about jalapeno is this. You can fire this thing up as hot as you want. For me, I'm the type of guy that doesn't like it super, super hot. Pete looks like a guy that wants it on fire. What we're going to do is we're going to open up this jalapeno. A way to keep the jalapeno a little bit on the mild side is very simple. Take your knife, run it across, and take the membrane right out. You see there's no seeds and there's actually no membrane. That's what actually gives the fire to the hot pepper. Now, after I take the membrane out, take it on that one. Again, I want to keep it the same size dice as the salmon. that next thing we have a red onion now when it comes to the red onion I don't want to put too much because it's very very powerful you don't want this to overpower the taco so again I'm gonna just cut it simply like so you don't need so much of it at the end of the day you can really put as much as you want to be honest just like so and again the last ingredient that we're gonna do cilantro now this is a very very touchy subject for some people it's either you love cilantro or you absolutely can't stand it i've heard people telling me it tastes like they're mixing a bottle of soap in their mouth here's the thing you don't really need to add cilantro to a ceviche you know like i said the mexicans or the peruvians might say that's you can't have ceviche without um <laughs> cilantro but i'll tell you what i need it i love it it gives a little bit of flavor makes it authentic chop it up real fine and again we're going to use this to actually garnish our tacos both of them when they're done because the cilantro really really goes well with all those asian flavors as well that we're going to do so once you have everything together it's simple grab yourself a spoon we're going to mix it all together you could actually see the salmon starting to turn and what's happening is it's starting to get pale and when it gets pale that's an indication that the, the acid is actually penetrating into the meat. Now, you could easily take this, put it in your fridge and let it sit for two hours, or you can eat it right away. For me, I'm gonna eat this right away. But before we do that, let's prepare our tuna. The next dish we're gonna do is the tuna poke. Again, these are both gonna be tacos, but you can actually serve these on a plate with some nacho chips, some flatbread. It really, really goes well together. Now, tuna, obviously when you have fresh tuna, shouldn't really smell or taste like anything, believe it or not. And the way you can tell that your tuna is fresh is very, very simple. Pull it out, it should look nice, clean. You don't wanna have too many fatty lines running through it. If you do go to the store and you are, you are looking to purchase sashimi grade tuna, 
simply ask the question, I'm looking for sashimi grade. You don't want to go there and they hand you a big old tuna steak that you're going to fire up on the grill. It will not taste that good. There's a lot of fat in that tuna. You want to have a nice lean loin when you're doing this. Now, tuna poke is very similar to, like I said, to the ceviche, but we're going to cut this a little bit thinner and our dices are going to be smaller. As you can see, I'm doing a little bit thinner strips when it comes to the tuna and a smaller dice. Now, I'm preparing this for one taco. One loin will probably feed about six. For all these recipes during Fish Du Jour, simply reach out. You can send an email. When we go live, don't be afraid to ask the question and I can definitely answer it if I'm on. So I'm just gonna speed it up here a little bit. Just kind of make my strips nice and thin like that. Again, having a razor sharp knife is really, really important if you are gonna be doing any kind of tuna poke or ceviche and you're cutting very, very delicate fish. Now, if you did buy the same grade tuna, you could actually serve this raw like sashimi and you can actually just cut it nice and thin and you can serve it with a little bit of wasabi some ginger have a party whatever you like but today we're doing a taco party asian inspired caribbean inspired now when we did do the ceviche like i said the acid actually cooked that fish and as we sit here the longer that's sitting in those beautiful citrus fruits the lemon and the lime it's actually cooking you can actually cover it up put it in the fridge for two hours if you like to serve it cold in this case we're going to eat it right away so we got all your tuna cut up just like so again cilantro it's one of those things it absolutely does not need to be in this dish if you're not a fan of cilantro, I am, I love it. I'm just gonna basically chop it up. Like so, and drop it in. Now, soy sauce, I would probably say a good two tablespoons, just like so. I like to use toasted sesame oil. It's got a lot more aroma to it, just like so. And right away, as soon as I open that bottle, it just punch me right in the face. Beautiful. Now, salt, kosher salt. Don't be afraid when you're using the salt. I'll tell you why. The tuna, again, it's not lacking flavor. It's just lacking the oomph. And the salt will really, really combine with the saltiness as well from the soy and combine with the sesame. All you want to do is make this around like so. And again, you can sit this right in your refrigerator for a couple hours. And I'll tell you what, the longer it sits, the better it is. I've had people tell me that their poke is better the next day. So if you're out there, fish on, you hook into a big tuna. I think you'll have tuna for a couple years if you hook into one of those suckers. Okay, we're gonna let this sit. We're gonna clean the area. We're gonna get ready to build these tacos. Time for the best part. I basically have some white corn tortillas going right now behind me. They're warming up. Again, you can use a flour tortilla, a whole wheat tortilla. You can use any kind of tortilla you want. In this case, I'm using the white corn, traditionally what the Mexicans and Peruvians like to do. Just simply toast it off, get it warm, and it'll be a lot easier to, to maneuver when you're building these tacos. So I have just a little, fancy little taco holder that you can pretty much buy anywhere really if you look them up online they're uh, they're very inexpensive we're going to start with your salmon ceviche look at that the color has already turned it hasn't even been 10 minutes and this salmon's already flipping out of its skin look at the color of that now when you're building these tacos start from the center work your way down just like that you can fill it as much as you want. Again, I'm doing a sort of an appetizer here. So I don't want to put too much. Get some of those avocados on there is the best part. 
And now we're gonna turn to this tuna poke. Look at the color of that. It literally brought it out. When I added the soy and the sesame into it, a little bit of cilantro, very simple. Fresh and simple, just like so. Drop that same amount as you were doing if you were doing the salmon taco. And you don't want to overfill it, just like so. Garnish. Add a little spring of cilantro on top. Again, for people that don't like cilantro, you can use micro basil, you can use popcorn shoots, anything that kind of brings out the color. Again, I'm gonna put a little lime, just like so. And there you have it. We have salmon ceviche, avocado, tuna poke. We're gonna finish it off with some toasted sesame seeds, just like so. Just to help the presentation, I know Ange likes that. If it looks good, it tastes better, right Ange? Anyways, very simple, looks good. Bon appetit, I hope you enjoy this. Please let me know if there's any questions you have. S easily send an email, ask the questions in the live feed. I'll be there to help you out and guide you through this. Fish on, I'm your, uh, your host from Fish Du Jour, Chef Antonio Maleka.